The second entry in Square Enix's Final Fantasy VII Remake project sees the party entering an open world. As you explore Gaia looking for fun things to do, you'll come across a variety of biomes and locales touched by Sephiroth's influence. So let's rank them. Like our planet, the ocean takes up a large amount of Seven Rebirths world map. Right before the game funnels you into its last dungeon, the tiny Bronco is unlocked to its fullest potential as a way to traverse the vast Great Blue. A hidden treasure quest and a few other side quests unlock, so if you always wanted to roleplay Cloud and Co. as pirates, have at it, matey. This game's exiting the vault and Breath of the Wild hill moment sees you exit the humble town of Calm and see rolling fields of freedom and fiends. Greeting the player with colorful nature, the grasslands stand in stark contrast to Midgar and its arid exterior. This is a very strong introduction to the open world, but there are more interesting regions later in the game. Trading some breath for verticality, Cosmo Canyon is perhaps the most interesting region to explore, especially paired with the expository lore drops about the planet and what Sephiroth is truly after. Although some may have little patience for navigating the pathways and glide boosts built to get you and your gliding chocobo to every corner of this region. You'll travel by chocoback everywhere you look in the open world, and one of the best regional variants you can find is in Nibelheim. The blue chocobo you'll find here takes a page out of the Super Mario Sunshine Book of Traversal, manipulating a jet stream to hover and explore. While this region is smaller than most, the chocobo abilities and story beats here more than make up for it. Maybe the largest glow-up compared to its role in the original, Gungaga has been fully fleshed out to be a significant stop on your journey. Seeing the return of a fan-favorite Crisis Core character and connections to Zack Fair, this jungle region and its bouncing chocobos have a lot to discover, even if you can get a little lost on those paths. Despite its bleak, broken-down appearance, Junon is an area full of life in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Between mountainous trails, a small village, and a sunken shipyard, Junon being an early game region works to showcase just how varied this world can be. One of the game's strongest side quests can be found here in Fort Condor, and this is where Yuffie joins the party. You could argue that this is where the true adventure begins. It may be unfair thanks to the sheer amount of what's on offer in the Corel region, but in this case quantity and quality can be found in abundance. The minigame filled Gold Saucer, Beach Paradise of Costa del Sol, Barrett's Hometown, and a desert full of surprising combat encounters, plus a new vehicle to explore with in the buggy, Corel has a whole lot to offer you and the party. It also has Kid G. The other regions don't have Kid G. So that is how each region of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth stacks up. The game is not wanting for regional variety, and pretty much everyone will be able to find an area they like. Unless you're a fan of snow levels, the Icicle Inn will be waiting for you in part 3. So until then, stay tuned to Game Rant for more.